Double J. With Tim Shield. John Frusciante, welcome to Double J. How are you? Good, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. Where, where are you at today? I'm at an apartment that I'm renting for the time being while work is being done in my house. And and how, how is like LA at the moment? Um, it's fine. The pollution got better. You know, we have fires here, so the pollution was really bad because of the fires. Yeah, of course. They're, they're making some progress, and so the pollution, maybe because of that and partly because of the wind or whatever, the, the air is not as bad to breathe at the moment. Oh, man, there's so many, like, overlapping giant news stories in the world. Sometimes it's, you know, something can kind of just enter a blind spot. Yeah, as far as the COVID cars out, there's a lot of cars out. For a while, the streets and the highways were real empty, but there's plenty of people out. When was the last time you reckon you might have been here? The last time I played with the Chili Peppers, I guess that must have been 2007 or something. Yeah. Do you have any fond memories or anything about Australia that you really kind of, uh, you know, enjoyed or that you remember or think about sometimes? I, I remember when we went there and we, we toured with Nine Inch Nails at the Big Day Out, and that was cool. Like, I got to meet Danny Lohner and Charlie Clouser, who both wound up being friends and also helping me get started developing as an electronic musician, you know, I think. Danny Loner was the first person to explain to me how you would have a drum machine playing a synthesizer. I did not know. I'd only thought you went like that on a keyboard or something. <laughs> and Charlie Clouser taught me how to use a modular synthesizer. So, so yeah, so so that was nice being on tour with them. I was a big fan of them at the time. And, and it was cool to be able to talk to people who knew what they were talking about. Let's get into your love of electronic music. Like, how far back does your love go? What's your first memory of a, an album or a sound in terms of dance music or electronic music? There were things here and there that I liked when I was growing up, but I didn't really seek it out. And I was so sort of caught up in trying to be the best guitarist that I can be that I knew more about guitar music with guitar in it than I did about synth music. Like, but there was always things that I liked. But basically, especially when we when I was in the Chili Peppers, because of what we were doing and the scene we were in and stuff, I just like wasn't paying attention to what people were doing in synth pop and stuff, really, with a few exceptions. At that time that we were making Californication, I found that electronic music was so inspiring to me and sound that I, I made a rule for myself. I can't listen to electronic music until after rehearsal every day, because when we were writing our record, if I would start out the day by listening to like Depeche Mode or rave music of some type, like it, it made what we were doing at rehearsal seem boring. Right. But so I would <laughs> I'd force myself to like listen to whatever guitar music seemed like colorful to me like Joy Division, Bow Wow Wow, like Fugazi, the Yardbirds, you know, there, there were certain things that seemed just as colorful as electronic music to me. But when I went home, it was all about like Tricky and Massive Attack and Depeche Mode and Human League and stuff like that. It's just like, and I feel that all throughout that last period that I was in the Chili Peppers, electronic music was real big influence on what I was doing, even though it wasn't super overt. I was still making guitar music in the band, but I was playing along with a lot of electronic music and memorizing it a lot. And I think it did help as, as rock music was starting to die, like our music was still sort of seemed new. And I feel like that's because I was being influenced by things that were new at that time that maybe another rock band would have still been only listening to, you know, Led Zeppelin or the Beatles or whatever. And we were listening, you know, I, I was listening to all kinds of stuff. But then when I was on drugs, I really froze. Like being on drugs, like makes your development sort of freeze. You can't really develop as a person or expand your horizons as a person when you're on drugs, in my opinion. When I got off drugs, I found that I was just a different person. I'd had a lot of sort of near-death experiences and stuff. And whatever it was about that and just surrendering myself to starting a new, you know, a new relationship to the outside world when I'd almost left the world, all of a sudden, electronic music was the main stuff that sounded exciting to me, you know. So it was that, and then I start touring around the world, and I just start buying, like, electronic music kind of at random, just, like, so I discovered, like, the Reflex label and uh, Warp Records. And other rave music, like, there was this label React that was very popular at the time that had these Reactivate samplers and these React test samplers, and I really liked all that. And then started going to drum and bass clubs and stuff in Los Angeles in the early 2000s, and... 
by like 2008, I started having friends who threw warehouse parties and stuff like that and became friends with Aaron Funk, you know, who gave me a lot of the 91 through 96 jungle and big beat hardcore that wound up being my favorite kinds of music. And it's been an influence on a lot of the stuff that I've done since that time. But this is the first time I've really like made really great beat based music that doesn't really have much of a rock in as far as I know, it doesn't have any rock influence or pop influence in it. It almost sounds like a revelation. It sounds like you've always been open to music and you've always been open even to electronic sounds and other kinds of sounds. Like that's come through in all of your work, even through the 90s, this openness to experimenting, which you're now quite well known for. But you're sort of talking about this awakening of electronic music being a thing that hit something that hadn't hit before. Like, can you put your finger on what that was, what that feeling was? I think when it started with synth pop and hip hop and stuff, they seemed really like simple to me or something. And they didn't seem very expressive. And little did I suspect that as time would go by very quickly, people started getting very expressive with sound and very expressive in ways that you can't be expressive on real instruments, like being expressive with samples and filling up music with tons of samples all over the place. And that in itself being a form of expression I didn't expect that at first, so I just got on my own path. But then when I when I discovered that like by the late nineties, like it had come so far, there was people being expressive with sound and speed and with breakbeats in ways that it was impossible to as a musician. The conception of speed and fast tempos that comes from uh, manipulating samples and using drum machines and stuff is so completely different than what a drummer does. Like Metallica is a great example of, you know, Master of Puppets or whatever is a great example of like human beings going fast, but that's very different from Jungle, which is like a computer going fast. It reminds me of how it was when I used to go see the Chili Peppers. That's how I saw them before I was in the band, you know, as being like they would play this fast funk music, this fast, intense funk music. They had these songs like Skinny Sweaty Man and Black Eyed Blonde and Police Helicopter. They had these songs that were very funk, but faster than funk had ever been. And I found that very exciting at the time. And for me, that's basically what hardcore and jungle were. It was just another way of doing fast funk and kind of going beyond what a drummer was capable of doing. I didn't realize that synthesists and samplists and uh, drum machinists were going to outdo real musicians. John, can we talk a little bit about Maya? Sure. Yeah. Maya, your cat, who the, who the oh, record is. Oh, cat. Yeah, yeah, not the album, but your <laughs> but your your beloved and sadly departed cat. Can you talk a little bit about about your relationship and and what and like why you decided that you would dedicate this album to Maya? Um, well, she was dying uh when we were preparing for the release of the record. So, just figured we'd turn it into a tribute to her since it was the last full-length record that she would be around for, but she was there starting at Stadium Arcadium. She was there while I was making everything that I've done since then. So, And she particularly liked, loved music and loved being with me while I made music and sat with me while I listened to music. And she was just my basically my companion all the time and loved laying on my stomach while I was laying in my chair practicing guitar and would rub on my stomach while I was playing guitar and yeah, just watch me while I make music, stick her head in the speaker. So that's who Maya was. She just really loved music and she died a few months ago. So, you know, it feels good to have, to have a, some kind of tribute to her and as a way of sort of helping her along and changing form into something else. Have you um, had the chance to spend much time with your friends in the Chili Peppers, for example, this year? You know, it's been a really strange year, obviously. We're all social distancing and there's a bit more isolation than usual. Have you had a chance to be checking in on the people who are close to you? Yeah, we we were rehearsing for a couple of months and then the quarantine started and then we stopped rehearsing for a couple of months and then uh, we went back to rehearsing. You know, if you trust the people who you're doing it with and you're all being careful, fine we uh so yeah we're, we're moving ahead with what we're doing we're writing new music you mean what are the odds that in 2021 or whenever there is a new red hot chili peppers record that there's like break beats and rave synths and stuff on there oh, John? No, you know no, can, no. Get him, can, can you get them in there or you're gonna try and I could, keep them separate I'm, <laughs> I, I'm sure i could if i wanted to but that wasn't the idea like that's what i do on my own and i don't know i i don't i've tried to do some of that kind of thing myself break beats but with a rock music chord progression or whatever i just think it's kind of cheesy and that's mm. not what i'm trying to do with the chili peppers and the chili peppers <laughs> and the chili peppers 
what I found exciting when I started playing with them, and I still am finding it exciting, is to just see what I can do with a guitar. Because for me, for the last 12 years, guitar is just something I practice music with, and it's not such a big part of the music that I make. So it was that idea of just how many different worlds you can pull out of a Stratocaster. Like other records, I would use multiple guitars. I'm really, so far in the studio, I've done everything that I've been doing on one guitar and just right. trying to make that guitar speak in different ways, say something different in every tune. And it's just a, it's a musical challenge of sorts. And I am involved, you know, with the drums in a different way than I have been. Chad and I are having an interactive thing different than we did before because before I didn't even know the difference between a ride cymbal or a crash cymbal or something like I now I'm I'm a drummer of in my own way you know through breakbeats and drum machines so you know a lot of the drums are kind of crazier than stuff we've done before but I'm not explicitly trying to do like drum and bass pop music I have to ask John I hope you don't mind me asking but what you know how is it being back with the Chili Peppers like how's it how's it feeling um, did you have any kind of trepidation about it or or has it just been ret returning to family? Yeah, it's just returning to family. I'm extremely comfortable with those people. It was as if no time had gone by at all when we started playing pretty much. With a couple of minor exceptions, like how Chad and I gradually got our communication together in a new way. But basically, like, we're all just as comfortable with each other as we ever were. And it we just felt like that right off the bat. When you've been playing and working and making music with the same people for so long, you can't take that for granted, that, that kind of... Um... My, my brain formed in that way. I joined the band when I was 18 years old, so I wasn't yet really an adult. And I became an adult while I was in the band for better or for worse i learned to be an adult from flea and anthony in a lot of ways so no, i don't know if that was a good thing or a bad thing but it's what it's the way it is and nevertheless and so i don't know i've spent like sort of half my life in the band and half my life out of the band as things turned out and i i suppose that's what i needed to be able to keep things fresh and to not feel like i was going to become one of those people that i didn't want to ever become who just sort of keep repeating themselves and go into uh, get too comfortable with the rock star mentality and the rock star lifestyle because it's one of those things you, you've got to fight in yourself the ego that comes along with that on one hand you want to be appreciative of the people who you know put you on a pedestal or tell you they love you and stuff and on the other hand you've got to keep your ego in check and you don't want to, don't want to go around thinking you're superior to other people or letting them make you think that you are any better than anybody else, you know? And I find it a juggling act and I find the ego to be a tricky opponent. When I looked at it with fresh eyes after all this time had gone by, I just think Flea and Anthony and Chad are particularly great people to be in a band with. Like I've known other musicians and I've seen how bad egos can fly. And as far as rock musicians go, those guys really know how to keep their feet on the ground and their their heads level and that it's, it's just very lucky for me that those were the people that I wound up having a good connection with and so as far as playing guitar there's nobody I'd really want to be doing it with other than the band and luckily the chemistry is still there and we still enjoy each other's company as human beings. Thank you so much for jumping on Double J today good luck with the record Good luck with the Chili Peppers and really hoping we get you back in Australia. It's been far too long, so hopefully at some point we, we can we can get you back here. Thanks, man. I hear a song come on, the jukebox. Music makes you. And I said, who, what, wait, who is this? And I was hooked. There's the lasers, the dry eyes, Townsend's doing the windmill. I'm 15 feet from, like, Keith Moon. And it was absolutely mind-blowing. I mean, he just opened this whole world that I'd never had any notion of before. Double J.